Good morning and welcome. I can't think of a better way to start the new year than gather together and worshiping our Lord and Savior. Please stand with us.
Thank you. You may be seated. Good morning and happy new year. It is a brand new year. I've been telling some people this is going to be a great year. I'm just going to go ahead and claim that now. It's going to be a fantastic year. 22 is behind us and we have a brand new fresh start today. You have a great message coming your way. So I'm very excited to hear what the Lord has given our pastor to share with us as we kick off 2023. My name's Anita Wellborn. I'm the Director of Ministry Development here at Carolina's Cornerstone. And for all of you that are tuning in online, we're so thrilled that you're with us as well. I want to make sure that everyone here got a worship folder this morning because I have a couple of things that I want to tell you about that's happening pretty quickly this year. We, uh, there is no peat moss growing on this church. We are always on the move. And so we want to bring a couple of things to your attention. Um, first and foremost, today is the first day of our coat drive. We are doing a coat drive through the month of January to help and uh, assist the crisis assistance ministry in Charlotte. Any coat, scarves, um, gloves, hats, anything that you have like that, we want you to bring. When you come in the door, there's a big box over on this wall. You can drop those in anytime this month, um, and we will be getting together with crisis assistance ministry at the end of the month to give those things to the homeless and those that um, are in need at the end of this month, okay? So please be, be sure. I know all of you got lots of new things for Christmas, right? Everybody got new things. Santa was good to everybody. But all of us have a lot in our closets, things that we don't wear. And the pastor says, if you haven't worn it in six months or a year, you got to get rid of it. I don't know that I agree with that statement, but I am going into my closet this week, and I'm going to be bringing my things too. So please help us out. Oh, <clears throat> that was my husband putting in his two cents worth, but uh, I will be cleaning out my closet this week, so that will be going to Crisis Assistance Ministry. Help us with that. Also, right here inside your worship folder, we've been talking about our summer mission trip, and I know it's winter and it's January, but we're going to be going down to Greenwood in July to start renovating a house that they have down there. It's almost 10,000 square feet. It is a big big place that's a picture of it right there jason is leading our teams because we have prep weekends one weekend a month between now and june to help us get ready for our mission week and we need your help hands feet and if you think i don't know what i would do down there don't let that stop you jason come see him he'll tell you all the things that we're going to do just trust the lord that there is a mighty work being done down at Connie Maxwell right now. And we are a blessed church to be able to be a small part of what's happening there. And so you only have today and next Sunday to get signed up because they'll be going the weekend of the 13th and 14th. And so we want you to get signed up, go down just for a couple of days, do a little bit of work, um, but make a huge impact on Connie Maxwell each month between now and June, okay? So go out, get signed up right out here outside in the foyer. Get you your name on the list, get signed up, talk to Jason. He'll get you all the information that you need. And now finally, I know a lot of you are very excited and are ready for this to happen, but our life groups start back this week. Everybody ready for your life groups to start back? We've only had two weeks off, but it feels like it's been forever. And so we have all brand new life groups. The back of your worship folder lists out every life group that's happening, every study that's going to be started, from men's studies to women's studies to students and our kids. And so all that information is on the back of your worship folder. Check that out. Read up on what's going to be taught um, and sign up. Get to be a part of a life group. Just show up Wednesday night. We start classes at 630. You can come on around 6 o'clock, fellowship with some people that are here. But come be a part of our life groups. Because this service is all about our family, but our life groups are all about getting to know each other on a more personal level as we grow together in Christ. So be a part of our life groups as we start off a brand new year this Wednesday night, okay? Still a lot of information inside your worship folder that you need to know about, so please take time to read it, take a look at it, take it home with you, put things down on your calendar, but here's the thing, too. If you're new or visiting with us, we're so glad that you're here. But we want to know that you're here. And the way that we can do that is right here on the back. 
You can sign up for life groups there. And I think right here on the inside, if you're new, you can scan that QR code. Just scan that quick little code. It's going to take you to a short little form. Fill it out. That lets us know that you're visiting with us. Maybe you're looking for a new church home. We would love that church home to be Carolina's Cornerstone. This is an awesome family of believers, and we want you to be a part of it. And so as the praise team comes back up to join me, we're going to stand together. All of you guys that are at home, if you're traveling, please be safe on your way back home tomorrow. But stand with us right now, and let's all worship together. Let's stand together. Honey in the rock, water in the stone, man I'm on the ground, no matter where I go, I don't need to worry now that I know everything I need you got there's honey in the rock. For the living well, only you can satisfy. Sweetness at the mercy seat, now I've tasted, it's not hard to see. Only you can satisfy. There's honey in the rock. 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 in your plan, power in the blood, healing in your hands, so you go and when you said it is done, everything you need is enough.
to you, Jesus. Oh, how sweet, how sweet it is to trust in you, Jesus. Thank you so much. You be seated this morning. I, I'm, I'm so glad you're here. And, and I, I was trying to think, how can I walk up this morning and just begin to start a new year. So maybe we need to pray for all those folks who stayed out <clears throat> too late last night. And and and, and we, we not, I don't believe in preaching you know, all these kind of things and making them feel guilty. But I hope they're guilty. I'm, not, I'm serious. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I want you to have a great day with us this morning. Have fun. Um, I want you to pay attention to the sermon this morning. And then I want you to hang with me through the closing. Today is a remarkable day because we have much to praise the Lord for as we start the new year. We had a phenomenal year for our church. We had a great, as we came through December, our Christmas program was phenomenal. Our, everybody was involved. Did you notice that the children were involved? The little, little ones below the, I mean, I don't know how you did the children, but the, even the little tiny ones. And then we had the children, then we had the youth, and then we had adults. Our students have done a phenomenal job. They're involved in working and trying to do things. And then we had the complete age groups. This is what happens when you're trying to balance your church and keep it all moving in the same direction. So this church is to be commended. Last night, I just want to say we had communion last night. It was um, a little bit different because of the fact we let you come in on your time schedule, and we had a unbelievable service on that thing from five to seven people came and i'm just so thankful for that but i want you to be praying for our church for 2023 i want you to think about this and of course i'm going we're going to send this video to everybody this week and say please listen but i want you to commit to come you cannot get what you need part-time from the lord let me let me make this example and so if you only come two out of four Sundays, and you'll hear this next week, this one too, I'm giving you a preview of next week's sermon. If you only come two out of four Sundays, what happens? You only get half of what God wants to you have. And, and I'm, I'm serious. I'm just being just as serious as I can because what happened? God has something every Sunday. Let me give you an example. So we've been praying for a lady named Jan Klutz, and she sits back here, and she's brought some great friends with her. And Jan Klutz has been in the hospital the last two weeks or so, and she was on a ventilator. And things, I'm just being honest with you, I didn't know how this was going to go. She had an infection in her body. And so finally they began, the doctors were moving. Her niece, Renee, is who I've been communicating with and working with. And finally the doctor said, we just, we're just going to do this. We're going to put her on a vent and we're just going to see what we can do. And they did. And on Friday, as I had talked to Renee that morning and then at, toward the middle of the day, I get a text from her and said, Mary, can you call me? So I called Renee, and Renee said, they've taken her off the vent, and she's talking, and she's awake. Oh, oh, it, it, gets, it gets gooder. Hang on, it gets gooder. Uh, what happened was, in this whole thing was, so she said, uh, will you call me? Because so, Jan wants to talk to me. And I said, okay. So I, I call her, and she said, hang on. And I heard Jan in there singing Amazing Grace. I'm going, maybe, maybe Sandy might want her. And, and she's doing this, and, and she was just wide awake. And, and you know what she was saying? She was saying thank you to the church because we're praying and we're believing and standing on the word, and she can't wait to get home. Let's give the Lord one more praise clap for her. Uh, I want you to be praying for one of our students. Her name is Bella uh, Hybels. Uh, they live not too far from here. Bella has had tremendous trouble all year long. She's been sick, couldn't do. They took her to Chapel Hill University of North Carolina Chapel Hill Hospital, and she is there, and they're working with her, trying to help her. And for the first time in about two years, she was able to sleep a whole night. So that's much to be. If you knew the situation as I do, you would go, praise be unto Jesus. So I want you to be praying for Bella. I want you to be praying for Barry Pelkin. He's going to be having surgery on the 5th. And he's, he's going to be doing some back surgery, and he's going to come out, and he's going to be able to help us work way, way harder than he ever has before. So I want you to be praying for him this week. And then I want you to be praying, continue to pray for Caden Benton. Uh, he is uh, Carolyn and Ken's great-grandson, and he got to come home. He has leukemia, and they're working hard to help this child. 
And so I want you to be praying for healing for Caden Denson. Would you do that with me, please? So today I want to ask you to come and pray with us. If you're here for the first time, I, I want to say thank you. And the way we do prayer time here is just by coming and praying. Some will come and kneel, some will stand. And I want to give you one more thing. I, I, I see my friend Randy back here. He and Shay have been married 40 years. I don't know how she did it. And, and, and then I see my buddy Steve, who's got this big old Winnebago, and they just ride all over around the country. I think they came here and run out of gas. And that's why they're here this morning. I don't know. But I want you to come and pray with me. Come on, let's pray. God, I just love this song. Thank you, Lord, for walking with us. Thank you for talking with us. Thank you for revealing things to us. I pray, Lord, for this church in 23 that this will be the greatest year in the history of this church. I pray, Father, that we won't make excuses. We'll just do what you've called us to do. And, Lord, today I pray for my friend Barry as he has back surgery on the 5th, that, Lord, you would just touch his body Heal his body. I pray for the doctors and nurses and you would give them wisdom on the best. How to... Lord, we pray for Caitlin this morning. Lord, you would just remove this leukemia from his body. For Bella, Lord, this morning we ask you to be with Bella and just help her get the doctor's wisdom on how she can be helped. And Lord, I pray for this morning, I pray for Shane's dad who's in the, been in and out of the hospital and I pray, Father, you would be with them. For Jan, Lord, I pray that you would continue to heal and have her back in our church where she can sit in her seat and we can praise you together. Lord, give us a great 23 and all God's people said, amen. Let's give the Lord a praise clap, amen.
in every season I know
Let's give the Lord a praise clap. Amen. You know, uh, I don't know about you, but how many of you woke up this morning and you started making those uh, New Year's resolutions? Anybody making any New Year's resolutions? It's like three of us. And, 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 and what happens, most people don't realize when we make these resolutions, we, we really, we don't always follow through. Matter of fact, the national statistic says that a person who starts out making New Year's resolutions, uh, only about 6% will finish that out in the end of the year. I think that's a little high strung personally. I don't know 6% of people to do it. But what happens, we all want a new year. We want things to be better. We want to make sure that, that we're doing things to make us happy. Because what happens, we, we, were, we were being taught by media and people we were around that you've got to first be happy. So let me just do a survey. How many of you in here this morning would be honest and raise your hand and say, I I'm happy this morning? Okay. For you that didn't, I'm with you sometimes. What well, happens, you can't be happy all the time. Sometimes in life, things come at us and they're very difficult to deal with and we have to work through it. So happiness is all that. I and when I think about that word being happy all the time, I think about Shay Turney all the time when I think about I don't know how she did it with, with Randy. So I just, so what happens to us, we, we have to be people that love the Lord and, and begin to do. I don't know what my resolution is. If I was going to make one, I don't know what it would be. But I'll tell you the thing that I think would be the top of my list. It would be that I would like to have a year where I am physically good, but most of all that I am spiritually good, that I'm emotionally good. And, and these are things that we need to focus on and I can sit here this morning and I could give you the top 10 things that you need to do to be successful in 23. Wouldn't you like to know that? That's like you winning the lottery. That's not going to happen. So what happens, of course, you got to play, pay to play to pay. So, I, so what happens to us in this whole thing is that we need to go back. See, what happens, God has given you something that will help you set the tone for 23 if you will just follow through on 23. And do the things. He says to us, how can you learn to build your life on the Bible? That's the whole thing today is that you're building your life on most things that are not secure. The one thing that's going to last forever is the word of the Lord. The answer is that we look at, because God has wired us and he has shaped you and me. He's made us inside of our hearts, right in the center of our souls. We are being drawn to him in some way. Now, some folks, they try it with alcohol. Some folks try it with drugs. Some try to just do whatever they want to do to get a fulfillment. My friends, the only way you're ever going to fill that void in your heart is Jesus Christ. And how will you get that? You get into his word. God wants you to learn that you need to encounter things in life. But I want to teach you this morning something that is so simplistic that the Bible teaches us that God has given you five senses. He's giving the sense of hear. Some of y'all have some really good ears in here. Some of us can be on this side, and you're on this side, and you hear exactly what we're saying about you. <laughs> but we got great. And then we got a smell. Now, I, when you come into our church, I am very sensitive about smells, and I know some of you do not like fresh linen. Not my problem. I like fresh linen. So what happens, we have a, we, we smell that. It's like, uh, you know, you walk in. Uh, I remember as a kid growing up, we were like poor, you know, and, and, and we would go to the, out to the little store above the house, or we'd be out, and I could smell a hamburger. <sighs> Can't you just smell it right now with me, don't you? Yeah. And, 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 and I, I couldn't do anything about it. I couldn't buy it because there was no way that I could afford it. So I made a promise to God right there on the spot. I said, if I ever, when I get older and I smell one, I'm going to get that one. And, and, and so we have a sense of smell. Then, then God gives us a sense of sight. He gives us the ability to see. For some of y'all here, you have two eyes and you do good. Some of y'all, this morning, you've got your two eyes and you've got your glasses and they're bifocals and they're gradual. Or you could be like the preacher who has one eye and I can only see things one way. That's the, the good advantage of that. So, so, so we have sight and we can see. And then we have this whole thing of taste. Now, taste is important because so there's some things in life you eat that's terrible. 
Brussels sprouts is terrible. I mean, we're going to have to have a shouting contest here. Who can holler a lot? I mean, there's other things. I mean, I love a tomato. I mean, you give me a fresh tomato and cut that baby and put white bread with Duke mayonnaise on it. I mean, don't put just that little bit of wimpy stuff on. Put, thick it up. Thick it up. Now he's done gone and hurt my feet. So what happens, there's things that we don't, you know, we don't, our taste buds form. I mean, there's nothing better than a pound cake, Sharon. I just want you to know that. So what happens in this, where Anita, she like knows I like chocolate, that, 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 that chocolate pie. Don't feel bad. You can give it to me next week. I'm going to die. So what happens to us is that we have things that God has given us and he's teaching us. And, and, and then, you know, with the taste, it's important. Because I know what all of y'all are going to do tomorrow. I already know. You know that? I'm not a psychic. I have no, Everybody's going on a diet tomorrow. I've watched y'all this morning. Y'all walking around like this. <laughs> trying to suck it in. And, and I understand that you got those, those, those clothes for Christmas, you know. And, and you, they said, well, what size do you wear, James? And James says, I wear a 32. James ain't been in a 32 in like 20 years. So, so what happens... You, you have to do that. And then my favorite thing in these five senses is touch. Now, let me, let me tell you folks here this morning, I, I'm, a, I'm a touchy, huggy dude, okay? I, I'm not trying to pick you up. I'm not trying to do this. I'm just a touchy person. I love people. And I, I tell you, during COVID, it was very difficult for me because of the fact that I, you couldn't touch people. I mean, even today, some, sometimes you go, and people are not feeling well, and they don't want to be touched. And I understand that. I really do. But when you do get better, I'm going to just rub all over you. So what happens to us, we're people who like to be touched. So God's given us these five natural things that he's implied and put into your life. And what I want to do this morning is I want you to learn how to use those five things to be successful in 23. You, you see for us this morning is that Paul writes in Scripture in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, he says, and all Scripture, not part of it, but all Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, training in righteousness, so that the servants of God may be thoroughly equipped on every good work. And what he tells us is that you and I need to understand that the Bible in 23 it ought to be the book you pick up every day. It ought to be the book you end on every day. And, and, the, and let me just say this to you. The Bible contains everything you need to know about God and learn about him. Everything. You want to know the characteristics of God? You know, we, we hear this all the time. What is the characteristics of God? It's Galatians 5. It says we are to love, faith, all that kind of stuff. There's the fruit of the Spirit. And, and we... We know that. We also know, I said last night as people came in, we were giving communion privately, and I told them that, that Jesus Christ dying on the cross and resurrection is the greatest love story in all the Bible. Without him doing that, we have no forgiveness of sins. We have no way to make eternal life and go to heaven. So what happens, we need to focus. Now, I want to use a word called meditating. Now, some of y'all have been in the New Age movement before, and you you know, you sit, you go somewhere and you cross your legs and you sit down and you hold your hands down. Mm. Ain't nobody. If I go there and I cross my legs and start doing that, you better get a crane at the end to get me back up. <laughs> Meditating, and for you and I, we need to read God's Word, then we need to meditate on it a little bit, and we just simply focus on, on the one thought over and over. And one of the thoughts that you need to hear this morning for 2023 is that God loves you. God loves you. And he wants us. Now, how many of you in here would admit this morning that you're a, you are a warrior? Would you just slip up your hand? Don't go too high. Kind of do this you know, Pentecostal thing. So what happens is that you and I need to understand most people that I know are warriors. Uh, they worry about how they're going to do this. In fact, you can take that habit what you're focusing on so much about, you can instead take it and then focus on the Word of God. So when worry comes, you don't start going 
and biting all your fingernails off and all that, what you do is you go to God and say, God, I want to focus on you through this very difficult time. So when I read, I, I want to encourage you to, as you read God's word, I want, to, I want you to do something for me. I want you to read bits and pieces of it. You know, I don't want you to, I know that a lot of folks will start today and you'll try to read the entire Bible through in a year. That's good. Don't misunderstand me. But I'm afraid you're reading it for just to be reading it so you can say, check, I done that. Check, I did this. That's not what God wants you to do. He doesn't, he wants us to take a scripture and he wants us to, to read it slowly and he wants us to, eat, to think about it, how the setting was and what's going on. And the second thing is, is that when you read God's word, you begin to see the truth and the character of God. If you look from Genesis to Revelation, I can show you Jesus in every book, all 66 of them. Jesus is not something that came along in the New Testament. Jesus was in the beginning. God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And what he wants us to do is, is that when we're reading his word, his, he will open up and lighten your path. By simply reading. Some of you might need to do this. You might need to find your room this year where you can find a place. Maybe it's in your, one of the spare bedrooms and you can go on the other side of the bed and sit down. And, and you can read out loud what the word of the Lord says. You see, when you read it out loud, it makes a big difference to us. And then the thing that I'm trying to get you to do is listen this year. When God's word is being taught in life groups and you need to be in a life group and you need to find one and we're trying to, we got one, we're trying to get back on his feet and trying to do some things. But what happens, that we come in, so here's the deal, I want you to write this down and this is important, okay? You, you, yeah, you got your pen out? Okay. So here's, this is how it works in 2023. <clears throat> so every morning I get up and, and I, have a, I have five devotions for me, five. They start the first one. I want it to be at 4.30, but, man, I was tired this morning. I wasn't getting up. And I didn't see no reason to get up because I, I knew half the people this morning were going to still be asleep at 9.30 or 10.30. And I'm going to call every one of them at 11 when I get through today. So what happens is, is that you and I, we, we need to read the devotion and we need to think about it. You need to think about that devotion and, and you need to take a moment and you need to read through it and you need to begin to see. So here's the deal. So I do my private devotion. Are you with me? Nod your head so I know you're alive, okay? I don't have to call 911. So, yeah, you read your devotion privately. That's, that's so you got it. Sunday morning, Monday morning, Tuesday morning, Wednesday. So when Wednesday comes, you have life groups. A lot of life groups meet on Wednesday. So when you come into your life group and, and the, the person who's leading that class starts talking and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit says, hey, on Tuesday you read this. Matter of fact, what we call that in our staff here at this church, that's confirmation of what God is doing. And, and, and then what happens, so you went from privately into a group and you share what God has revealed to you in that group. And then you come to corporate worship. On Sunday morning, you come to corporate worship and you take all that you've been given and you give it to the Lord as an offering. God, maybe you want to say, God, this week you've blessed me. My friend James working down here on the front row, he's going to Israel for two weeks and he, they might not let him back. He looks like a terrorist to me, but I mean, <clears throat> I'm just, now for y'all people, don't get all upset. Hold on. Okay, let me mark that off my comedian role here. So James is going to Israel for two weeks on a, taking a class about, about the Bible. I know James very personally. I know how he is. And, and he and I were talking. He said, you know, I think I'm going to become a, a bubbling idiot. And I said, what do you mean by that? He said, I'm going to be so emotional because I'm walking in the path of Jesus. Oh, my gosh. You got to think about that, man. It's good. I can use that in my sermon. Let me write this down. And what happened, this is what God is saying to us. So I take my private, my group, my small group, and then I come to corporate and I give it all to the Lord. Let me tell you something. If you do this in 2023, your life will change. You'll see God in ways you've never, ever seen him before. Reading the Bible is a good, is just the most important part of your life. James writes it this way in James 1, 19 through 25. He says, take note of this. He says, everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. 
See, when you begin to build your life in 23 on the Word of God, your life will be better. You'll see what happens. Many of you think you're smarter than God. That's why you don't listen to Him. How's that working out for you? And when what the Lord teaches us is, is that when we accept Christ, we don't just come back the next day and become a 25-year veteran Christian. It takes time. It takes a working on it. God wants us to do it and work on it. God wants you to encounter him in your reading of his word. I, I want to say this in a loving way to you. You cannot be a very effective Christian in preserving your faith and sharing with us if you do not obey and read the word of God. You hit it every once in a while. I, I, I'm going to say it again. Some of us in this room have just, we come two out of four Sundays to this, that, and the other. You're only getting half what God has for you. So I, we, we had COVID, COVID's gone. Now I know some of it, and said, there's seven counties, listen, I'm a way read, better reader. There's seven counties in, right now in South Carolina that's got an outbreak. Okay, as long as they don't come to Fort Mill area, I'm good with that. So what happens is that we can't use excuses anymore. We gotta be back in God's word. We gotta be back in his house. We gotta be back working together. If you feel bad, do what other people do. Come, if you don't have a gym trip, wear a match. I'm good with that. I'll bump you high fives or elbows, whatever it takes. But I want you to be in the business of getting up on Sunday morning, coming to church, bringing your children, finding you a life group. So here's what I want to do. I want us to take note of this real quick. I'm going to do this real quick. Is that one, what happened? God's created the five senses and he's given them to you. So what happens, James is teaching us, he's the brother of Jesus. He's teaching him. Uh, do you have your ears on? Yeah, I mean, this morning, do you have your ears on? And see, we know what Paul writes in Romans 10, 7. He says, faith comes from what? Hearing the message. And see, for you and I, we are to quickly listen, and which means for you and I, we are to accept the word. I, I must receive it with my ears before the rest of it can go. See, I like when you talk about this whole thing. It's, just, it's like having a stranger come in your midst and you welcome them and you talk with them. It means that you welcome the Holy Spirit to come in your life. And it means I've come. Lord, I'm open. I'm ready. It's an attitude of acceptance. When I hear it, how will I respond? If you're going to get the Bible in your life, you're going to have to start. I am wide open, Lord. I, I got the attitude of acceptance and I welcome the word. And I accept the word that's planted in me. Many times we've heard the sermon preached about the person who went out and was spreading the seeds all over the field. Some fell here, some fell there. And what I want to remind you is this, is that the seed that we spread out is the word of God. And the only way you can get the word of God is being in the word of God. So what he begins to teach us is that the soil that you put it on is a person's heart. It, it takes that heart and it begins to show us because we have to be people. Now, let, let me give you an example. Maybe some of you, I don't think you were this way this morning. Don't look, don't look around too much. But, you, you, you know, you, for example, you, you, um, you, you come to church, you get up late, you rush around, you know, you're trying to find these shoes and you're trying to time as you walk out the door. And you, you, all of a sudden you become very frustrated with, the, with things in life. You, you ever had that? You, you know, you're trying to do everything, and you're behind, and, and you, you get frustrated. And so what happens to us, and then what it does, it puts you into a real irritable mood. This would be a great time. How many of you have ever been in a bad mood or irritable mood? If you don't raise your hand, you're lying before God. I just want you to know that. Um, and so what happens is, and, and then here we get to the church, we, we run in, we're late. And so the welcome team is trying to speak to you, and you just run right by, and, and, and you just sit down and got you cross your arms. <sighs> Man, she made me so mad. I, I can just go on with this all day. It's my, one of my routines. So what happens is that you come in, and all of a sudden you say, okay, God, I'm ready for you to talk to me. <laughs> you ain't no more receptive to receiving with the word than anybody. What happens, it's all about our attitude and our thought price. And so you could take two people in our church. So you get two people in the church. They come in and they, they, they hear the message. One of them says, man, that berry is awesome. 
No, 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 don't do that. And, and what happens, he comes in and, and he says, man, that was powerful. Thank y'all for doing that. I, I mean that in a loving way. I, I kind of like me too. So what happens is that we come in and, and the person says, man, it was powerful. It was good. And the other person, same person sitting right beside the same person, they go, I, I didn't get anything out of that. I want to slap you. So, so what happens is that what we do is we got to realize we got to have, be receptive. You got to be receptive. I would rather you come to church and walk around the church three or four times and calm down and be late than you come in and be late and not receptive. See, God can't speak to you if you're not receptive. I, I've learned this, that, that I don't know how our young people do it. I, our young people are phenomenal, our students are they can listen to the radio blare and, and study algebra. And, and some of them are really good. They can have their earphones on, listening to music, playing Fortnite, and reading a book in chemistry. They're very talented. So for me, I have to have things quiet. I mean, I'm just going to be honest with you. If I can take the moment and get quiet, I can hear the Lord. With all the confusion and noise and going on, I, I can't. I, 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 for me, it's, it's what the Lord has taught me personally. Now, I'm not trying to tell you how you do it is wrong. I'm just telling you for me, I have to calm down. This is why it's so important. If I could illustrate this in my mind would be that you put two chairs in a room. In this one chair, you lay your Bible in there. And, you, and you're trying to read along what the Lord's telling you to read. And that you're sitting there and you're praying. Then, then all of a sudden you get down on your knees after reading God's word and pray over God's word. You see, if all the commotion is going on, you're, you're not going to hear from God. Sometimes you, we do this in our church. We, we come in and we're angry about something. You know, first of all, if you were speeding up Gardendale, you got 154 to 248, was it 248, Jordan? A ticket. And, and what happens, you come in, you're angry, and you're all upset, and you're irritated, and you're all uptight, and you're emotionally upset. Or you can learn how to calm down and, and kind of get relaxed. And, and there's something else. I'm, I'm only talking to the Christian here. Listen to me. I'm only talking to the people that have given their life to Christ. Sometimes we've got to clean up. Now, for, for a non-Christian, let me say this to you. God don't need you to clean up. He'll take care of that when you come. Don't you worry about it. So, but as a Christian, there's things that we need to clean up. And this year in 2023, there are things that we need to get rid of. The Bible's very clear. It says in James 1.19, it says get rid of, of all that moral unfit stuff. He's telling us that you and I, we, we need to be careful about these things. So I started digging into this, and, and I started looking into the Greek, and I started looking at, what does it mean to get rid of? What stops us from hearing what God is trying to say? And I discovered this word, and I just don't want you to go nuts on me, but it's called earwax. Your ears get stopped up. I mean, we, we, we get all stopped up, and we, we get emotional and spiritual, and, mentally, and we, just, we don't hear a word that the Lord is saying. And the reason we don't is because we got all this junk in our trunk, in our life. We, 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 wind up, we're, we wind up putting ourselves in a situation where God is saying, take this out of your trunk. Get rid of this. Get rid of this. Get rid of this. You see what happens? Evil sets in. We get angry with people and we start hating them. And we start talking about them. That's called gossip in the church. And, and we begin to do those things. And what the Lord is saying, we need to confess instead of gossip. We need to confess when we get angry. We don't know all the circumstances that are going on. I, I was laughing at Tina this morning. We were back in the sound booth, and she's learning our new system up there and helping us. And, and, and we said, we're, she's saying, the people in the church have no idea all the work that it takes to get ready for Sunday morning. You know, it's like getting ready as we change the scenes because I'm all about our sets and stuff. It's really important. We had a beautiful Christmas set, and we converted it to what it is now. And, uh, you know, uh, they put it up here like it was snow. I mean, last Sunday, it was cold. 
I told y'all last Sunday, if you just wait two or three days, it'll change. The weather changes. Now we're going to be all sick next Sunday because the weather went from 10 to 75. So, so what the Lord is teaching us is, is that we need to confess instead of being angry. We need to look at things. We also need to be humble. 73 times in the New Testament, the word humble comes in. James writes, he says, humble yourself before the Lord and he will lift you up. And then he says, humbly accept the word planted in which you can save yourself. What does it mean to be humble? It just simply means that you take God's word as it is. That prideful attitude that you have, you take away. See, for me, the reason I'm asking you to do these things, calm down, sit down, be quiet, listen, is because in, in less than 36 hours, 95% of what I've taught you this morning, you will forget. That, I didn't make that up. That's national statistics. That ain't real happy for a preacher. We don't like you forget what we're saying. So what happens is that we got to put ourselves in a position. We give you a handout. If you're here for the first time, we give a handout, and the answers are on the back because your preacher doesn't want you to fail. He wants to give you an A. And what happens to us is that we want to chew on that. I love what Matthew 7, 24 says, Therefore, who hears these words of mine, put them into practice, is like a wise man who built his house on a rock. Now, let me quickly go. Number two is that you, you, you read God's word with your eyes. And I know what you're thinking. How else would you read it? So you don't just merely listen to the words. You receive it. You do what it says. And, and I don't know about you, but sometimes uh, we, we, uh, we can't grow without reading God's word. You've you got to look at his word. You've got to look at it intently. Your part is you look at it intently, you fix, you can be careful with it. So let me tell you what I do. This is just, this is worth about 50 cents if you got in your pocket. When I read the Bible, I read it. I reflect on it. I think about it. And my favorite word is I ponder it. I, I, I just begin to ponder and think about all the things. This is why when I teach in scripture and preaching and in classes, I want you to know the historical setting of how tough it was to be a Christian and how tough it was to survive. You and I, we're assuming we're going to live all, we're going to live forever, never, never, never on this side of heaven. Ain't going to happen. These people are trying to survive from day to day just to have enough food to feed them or feed them their families. You and I have got it made. We've got a freezer. You know, for some of you in here, you're desperate. You've got it full of chicken. And you need to get the beef. You know? So what happens is that we, we begin to realize is that we don't we got it made. Listen, you know this year you you can have there's so many ways you can read the Bible. There's apps. I don't know exactly what an app does, but there's apps where you can put it in and it'll keep you on, on course of reading God's word every day. Some of you have BibleGateway.com, you get a Bible verse or whatever it might be. And and what you want to do is you, you want you need to hear the word. And then you got to do it. The purpose of the whole thing is this. You need to look in the mirror every once in a while. And you need to evaluate yourself. Am I doing what God's called me to do? See, I've learned that he wants to bless you. He, he wants to bless you in everything you do. He wants to bless you in every area of your life. He wants to bless your family. He wants to bless your work. He wants to bless your, fi your finances. And he wants to help you. And then, then the third thing I've learned in, in talking and trying to teach you this morning, the five senses, is I want you to dig into the word with your hands and your mouth. There's a difference between reading the Bible and studying the Bible. Reading the Bible is just reading, checking off. Studying the Bible is digging into it, researching. This is why I tell you, if you don't read the entire Bible, and you're, your preacher is not going to be mad at you. As long as you're trying to dig into this. See, here's my, my way. This is Barry's way. It says, it's, it's not, it is not study unless you have a pen or a pencil and you write it down. You go into my office or get in my truck, wipe your feet off if you get in my truck. But if you get in there, there's always going to be a pad and pencil. I don't even like ink pens. And, and the reason I, I'm, I'm writing stuff down the Lord's giving me. Because see, if you're not prepared for him to speak back to you, you're going to miss what he's got. It's not just reading it. It's researching and saying to him, God, 
What are you speaking to me? This is why many of our life group leaders in this church teach this way. It's because we want you to hear a scripture, you see it, you hear it, but then the question has to come, how does it apply to my life? How am I going to take this and apply it on Monday morning? When it, no, let's see, Tuesday morning, most of y'all are going to be off tomorrow. We, we got plenty for you to do at the church if you don't have anything to do at home. But on Tuesday, you'll go back to work, and, and you need to remember what God has said. You need to work through it. So he tells us that we need to write it down. When I hear stuff, I like to write stuff down. I, I love, I love, I'm a story person. I love stories. I love when people talk about God and what God has done in their lives. I write stuff down. See, I've learned that the components to study God's words, you got to write it down. John 5, 39 says, you search the scriptures because you believe they will give you eternal life. And But the scriptures point to me. See, everything that goes on is pointing you to Jesus. And you need to write it down. The other thing is you need to talk to someone about what you got. I want to encourage you right now that you would find you a partner this year. And that you would take that devotion and both of you get the same devotion and you start reading it. You start reading it together. And then you text each other and say, this is what I think, this is what. Now, some of you, uh, if you're like me, I, I don't mind texting. I mean, if you get a text from me and it, all the words are not spelled right, don't blame me. What happens, I'm a much better talker. Call me. And what happens in this thing is, is that we need to share what God is giving us on that day in devotion that we share it with someone else. It can be a mentorship. It can be anything you want to be, but you need a partner to pray with. And what happens to us is that we see in Scripture a lot of times that um, we, we look in Acts 17, 11, it says the people of Beret were open-minded more than the Thessalonians. They listened eagerly of Paul's message. They search the scriptures day and night. When you start searching, you'll start learning. Study will come. And then when people come along and they tell you crazy things, see, I'm a person who loves archaeology. This week, we've had 10 or 12 major things come out. Guess what one of them was? One of them was is that we begin to realize that Moses really did cross the Red Sea. No joke. And then there was another one talking about it in King Solomon's day and that they were, King Solomon, if you read the story of Solomon's temple and all these things, you'll discover that there's a lot of copper. They found that copper mine about three months ago. It was hidden. You say, what are you saying? Listen, just because the History Channel tells you some does not make it true. Some WAPhead, I shouldn't have said that, but they probably are a WAPhead. And they're on media telling you that God, God's not alive. Life magazine did that and had to close their doors. You have to be understand. Here, here, listen to me. Let me pull my heart out for a second. You, you talk to somebody, and they say, "Well, I don't. You know, I don't. I, I read where that's not true." My first question is not, "Oh, bless your heart." No, where did you where, where did you read that at? Where where did you read what that told you that really didn't happen? That Moses didn't cross the Red Sea. Where, well, I, I read it in this. Do you know the dude? No. D did you research behind? What you'll discover, listen to me, hear me out. What you'll discover, these people said that didn't happen, this didn't happen. They no more believe in God than a man walking on Mars. They do not believe that. Why would you listen to that? Why would we listen to someone? This is why I love the testimonies. But see, you can't argue with someone who's telling you about what Jesus has done for them. You go, I tell you what, you give us a couple weeks, we'll get my buddy Jan Klux, she'll be back. Let her tell what Jesus did for her. You see, this is what I'm trying to teach this morning, is that you and I, we need to be with people and discuss things that we learned. See, Paul was telling us we need to be in those groups. Let, let me quickly go. We, one of the things I've learned is that I need to review and remember with my mind. James 1, 25 says, be, but if you look carefully in the perfect law, and that, that sets you free, and if you do what is said and you don't forget what you've heard, God will bless you for it. When you begin to look at this, he says, look intently 
And you and I are people that we need to make sure we understand that we need to review and remember everything. Oh, take your Bibles. Take, take your Bibles. Turn to Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. If you got one of them little phones, you just pull that baby right up. And, and I'm reading it from the NIV. I want to show you something that I want to start your 2023 year with something I discovered in my studies that proves my point, what I've been saying about a lot of folks. Joshua 1.8 from the NIV version says this. Don't let this book of law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything that is written. Watch this. Watch this. Then you will be what? Prosperously and successful. That one scripture is the only scripture in the whole entire Bible that says God will prosper you. It ain't you send me $1,000 and then we'll plant a seed and bless your heart. It'll get $10,000. If that's the case, I'd be the richest man in town. You see, this is what he tells us. The prosper part is not financial all the time. Prospering is that you make friends and you help someone who's struggling. You pray for those that are sick. Prosper means that you and I will do everything we can to make sure that someone else is not struggling. You can be successful in 23. You just need to read it and do what God tells you to do. And he goes on. He tells us that we need to work on our memory. So let me just ask this question. How many of you uh, struggle with your memory a little bit? Would you raise your hands? Okay, let, let me look over here. Keep your hands up. I'm going to point some folks out and need to raise their hands. So what happens in memory is that we don't, we don't exercise our minds, you know. Uh, how many if you have been here and, you know, when I was growing up, we had to memorize uh, stuff. I, my family, we went to church every time the doors were cracked, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and any other night. And when I was growing up, back on Sunday nights when you came to church, you had training union. There's only about eight of us that know what that means. You had to go from six to seven. You went to train union. And us young people, the students just want to tell you, we had to, mem we had to memorize stuff in the Bible. We had Bible drills. Is anybody here with me? Yeah, we had Bible drills. Yeah, thank you very much for that word because that's exactly what they were. I wanted to cut the teacher's head off of it. So what happens is, you had to remember, and you had the, everybody had to have the same Bible. They gave you this old hardback book, and 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 you you were standing back, and there'd be a whole line of it. Y'all, none of this appreciate you. Now, for the rest of you, don't. I wish you had it experienced it. And and what and and they would say, um, John three sixteen. You, you got to get it, and you step up, and you read it. Uh, uh you step up and memorize it, and you re speak out what you've memorized from the King James version. So what happens is that you learned it, and you learn how to, to speak and to share. And, and, and I was pretty good. I was a state champion a couple of times, and they finally told me not to come back. I'm kind of like, the, you know, they, they didn't want me to come back because I wasn't going to lose the argument. So what happens to us is that the Lord is telling us that we need to do these things. We, we need to use our memories and sharpen them. We need to try to learn at least one verse per week. That gives you 52 verses that you can memorize. And you say, well, why is that important? What well, happens one day, you'll be in a situation and life will be falling apart. And that one verse that you memorize will come back to you and it'll help you through that very difficult time. There's some of you in this room, you've had some very difficult times in your life. Things have destroyed things that you loved. And, and all you can do is get through is by listening. See, the skill of remembering and reviewing is called meditation. David writes in Psalms 115, verse 15, he says, I meditate on your precepts and consider your ways. He always says that. Meditation is just simply remembering what Scripture says. See, I like the Message Bible because it's different. It talks the way I do. It's a redneck, and, and you're able to do it. And I, and I encourage, I don't care what translation you use. I don't care which one. Just, just read it and memorize it. See, if you're serious about wanting to become a strong Christian this year, you're going to have to get in the word of the Lord. And, and then I want to close with this, just by telling you real quick. Um, we, we have to respond this year in actions. James 1, says, don't merely listen to the word. So re don't deceive yourself. Do what it says. See, for you and I, 
Learning all this is so important. Let me tell you why. See, your life matters. My God does not make junk. Your life matters. It may not be perfect. You may be here this morning and you've been adopted and you don't know your parents. It's okay. Because, see, God knew you before you was ever born. He knew who your mom and daddy was going to be, whether you know them or not. And it's okay. You know, and, and what happens in this is that everything you do matters. Every time you get something from me, he'll say, make every day count. So let me tell you a story. It's a true story. There was this man. He was uh, up in Canada. He's walking around. It's a snowstorm. And he's kind of gotten lost. And the snow is just coming and coming and coming down. And, and in this, he's, he's struggling because it's, it's getting, he's having a hard time seeing. He's, getting, he's being weighted down. He didn't have all the stuff that, that maybe today we have to walk in the snow. And he is it's just getting worse and worse and worse. His energy is beyond anything. He has none. He's thirsty. He's hungry. And then he finally decides just to sit down and die. While he's sitting there, he's given up. He heard a moan. He heard a moaning of someone. He, he began to look. He got up. Everything that he had, he got up. And he started walking toward what he was hearing, the moaning of a person. And when he got there, there was another traveler just like him who got stuck in the snow. The man himself, with no energy, picks the man up, and he begins to walk. He doesn't know where to go. He has no sense of directions. He just starts walking. After about 20 minutes of walking, he looks and he sees this little old shack out there with the smoke coming out. He cares and he Open, knocks the front door and goes in and he sets the man by the fire. The moral of the story from a Christian is this. See, when your life, you need to be the person. When you're ready to give up, look around you. See, what the greatest thing that a person can do is help another person out. I say this in a loving way. My favorite movie is Wonderful Life. Mr. Bailey standing at the bridge and getting ready to jump in and die. And there's Clarence. And Clarence says, I jumped in to save you so you would save me. You see, the thing here is that you and I are people that can help other people in our lives by not giving up and being a part of things and helping your church so we can help. I want a church to do things, great and mighty things, but in 23, we got to get after it. we got to get after it. So the Lord gave me something yesterday morning at 2.30 in the morning. If you hang out with me, you won't sleep. I can tell you that right now. And what we're going to do this morning, I want you to do, I don't want you to leave. Nobody leave. My guys have got the doors locked. They've got their guns out and they're drawn. <laughs> I want us to come together and unify. Miss Anita, come up here and tell us how we're going to do this and what we're going to do. I want us to make a circle inside this worship center. So the easiest way we think we can do this is everybody that's in this section, we want you to get up, move to the wall, and kind of start making a U coming out from behind your section. This section here, you're going to move forward toward me, coming right here in front of the steps. This section, you students, you're going to lead everybody toward the back wall. The line all the way up. David's back there to help you as well. And the west coast over here, you're going to stand against that wall and mirror the East Coast. So you're going to circle around this way and meet everybody. And we're going to 
If you are not comfortable holding hands, reach out and touch the shoulder of the person next to you. If you're not good with touching hands, it's okay. Tell me for somebody that's not able to get up. This if you are not able to get up and move, you are more than welcome to just stay right where you are. Let's move all the way around. We're going to do any music? We're not going to do any music now. He just changed his mind. <laughs> all right, everybody, everybody, close. hey. This is where y'all need to be close. Over there where Bill Grantham is, he didn't smell. He took a bathroom. Y'all close in over there. Switch okay? over this way so we can get the rest of these people into the circle. You're Everybody fine. slide You're over, fine. slide over. <clears throat> doing good. Everybody's doing good. Imagine okay. we've been full in here this morning. Yes. All right. So this morning, if, if you feel like holding someone's hands, do it. If you don't, just just you put your hand on their shoulder and say, bless them, Lord. And, and what I want to do is, I, I want us, Lord gave this to me yesterday at 2.30 in the morning. And the reason I'm giving this to you is because the Lord spoke it to me. I don't know what it means except one thing. In 2023, this church has to get our ducks in a row. We have to be united. We have to go forward in faith. We have to make the goal of winning people for Christ in Matthew 28, number one. The people out there will never come in here unless you go out there and invite them to come in. Amen. So I want to challenge you this morning. I, I want you to join with us. Miss Lee, you find your place. Let me slap right back, y'all. Y'all good. I want to invite you to pray with me that God will strengthen our church in 23 like never before. That we would be sold out, 100% sold out, all in for Jesus. That we wouldn't use any more excuses. And we, we, if we call and say we need help, I want you to get up and come. So what are we, don't make no difference what we're doing. I just want to be a part. That's the attitude that God wants us to have. And this church needs it. Now, listen, there's nothing wrong with this church. If you're here for the first time, we're good. These people love me. I love most of them. I'm just kidding. So, so what happens is that well, we got to be unified. We got to come together. And when things don't go our way, we can't get all... In a tizzy, we can't because we don't know all the deal that's going on. So I want to encourage you this morning. I want to close the service this way. And I messed up Melanie. I had her come up there and then she got over with the Holy Spirit. That's not the way we went. So I want us to pray in closing. God, here are your people. We are ready and we're all in for 2023. We've, we know by today from the message that you've taught us out of something, a little simple thing that you've made for us and you gave us the five senses. They're from you. Lord, help us today to be sold out. That we will begin to write down people's names that we know that are not in church and they don't know Christ. We would begin to write their names down and pray over them. And Lord, right now, I pray for our church. Lord, I pray that you would bless us spiritually, numerical, financially. Help us, Lord, to be where you want us to be. Help us today as we come in that we will encourage each other no matter what. As we kick 23 off, I pray, Lord, that we'll be the best church ever in our lives. Now, Lord, we give you glory and honor and praise for what you're going to do. Use these people mightily. And we give you praise again, Lord. And all God's people said, amen. Let's give the Lord a praise, okay? Hey, amen. Amen. And so so here, since, since, since you're up and you're so close, um, the way we can meet, hit the deficit, I just want you to reach over to your neighbor's pocket, pull out their pocket. <laughs> Y'all have a great day. We'll see you next week. Let's give the Lord one more praise. Clap. Have a great time. Thank you for coming.